programming better drum beats. I guess that that's today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Anna Location and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about the Mixer project. I'll tell you all about Discord, Patreon, and all that good stuff. Do stick around. And I'll tell you who the new patrons are. So, programming better drum beats. I mean, hey, that's always good, right? To just create better loops. But in the end of the day, a lot of people say like, how do I go about it? Well, there's a lot of people that have melodies in their head, so they play mel melodies first. And that's cool. And then when it comes to the drums, sometimes the drums are lacking. Now, I found a trick, at least, don't know if it's a trick, but I found a way to enhance my beat making process in such a way that I think it always works out. I use top loops. I find them left to right, I create them. You know, I'm a hybrid producer, so that's a part of what I do on my live set that's done in the box, on my door. I will shape the sounds, look at frequencies ahead of time, and then my only portal to that outside blasphemous uh, world is my 1010 black box. And then I'll just launch those samples there. Now I'm not using complete loops, I am using top loops. Top loops meaning there is room to add stuff to it. And that's cool if you work in the door because then you'll just, eh, usually when it comes in a sound pack, it is a jigsaw puzzle, the kick is there, and everything is separate, and that's this one little loop that you can stick over the top, but when you work with a doorless setup, you now have to just make that jigsaw puzzle yourself. It needs to fit into one another. Uh, snugly, mind you, otherwise you'll hear it. So what I do is, I have a specific frequency range in which I will operate with my top loop, mainly mid-highs, yeah? For your nerds out there, think about, say, from maybe, one kilohertz up uh, there there's a lot of content that happens there and then you add stuff to it you leave room for different pieces in that inset top loop so that you can add stuff to it so the kick drum will go underneath there's a tom that goes in the middle and then you know you'll just figure out how that works and if you do it correctly you'll not hear that the loop is there if you screw it up when you take out the loop, your whole beat falls apart. So the trick is to enhance your groove, it being a better sort of like um, creative, constructive groove on which you can build rest. And I think that if you've got a good groove going, if you're making groove techno, dub techno, so if you're in that kind of vibe, this video might be for you as well. Um, I think that if you've got a good groove going, you don't need much else, really, you know what I mean? So let's see. If I can put some uh, money where my mouth is, yeah? Let's do that, all right. That's a kick right here. The four, two, three, and back. Boom, that's the loop uh, uh, that I have set on the RK008. Now, the loop that I have coming from the black box is this. As you can hear, that there's, there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. So instantly there is some sort of a groove already going. Now, I must say that I've prepared this loop ahead of time, so I know that this will fit on the um, 909 kick drum. A 909 kick drum that in itself um, has a few elements that I've sorted out. Usually the 909 kick drums that you know and uh, come across most of the times sound like this. The tuning is all the way up. The attack is all the way up, the decay is all the way up, and obviously the level. So, um, unmistakably 909 kick, but I do think that it is now um, so dominant that I do think that it, we can tone it down a little bit. So listen to the to the tune, tuning. So here we get that snappy transient attack, and then here. I'm on one o'clock right now with the tuning knob. And the further I go down with the tuning knob, the more it's going to resemble an 808 style um, envelope, almost. And the D 
the cake can be shorter. And the attack can be also toned down a little bit. So, so this is a moderate kick drum, right? So I will give it a little bit more decay. So the length of the, of the kick will be a little bit longer. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do on my RK008, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tracks. On those tracks, I can decide uh, which MIDI channel I would use. I've got 16 MIDI channels available per track. So it means that obviously I can tell uh, eight different machines to react to uh, different MIDI uh, channels. In this case, um, this uh, brain is sending out clock through the 006 here. That is triggering the uh, black box here. Uh, and then the, on the 909, I have to set it in a certain mode, otherwise it'll send out a different clock it's with, with PPQ and stuff. Um, I won't bug you with it, but it needs to be set in a certain way. So if I hold shift and I press this, if this zero here is not in the middle, you hear it go off instantly. You see, it's getting a different clock right here. So it needs to go here. And then I'll stop it. I'll stop this and I'll stop start it so now it's starting on a beat this is something i found out like what's happening there so starting the loop one two three is so now everything starts on the beat um the next step over on my track i'm going to track number two is i'm going to look for a hat because i want to first add something to this loop that would not stand out too much so the bigger frequencies i address later which is contradictory to what you hear me say on this channel most of the time where I will use the bigger frequencies first to get them out of the way but if you are trying to enhance your groove um, and you're working with a, say a top loop to give you a little bit of a bearing because um, the whole idea here is to make music fast so if you have a, a top loop that works for you you don't necessarily want to mimic the whole loop you know just like blatantly stick it in there so I'm going to go for my um, closed hat on which the decay is all the way uh, closed here so you can hear that the short snappy notes that I've got on this top loop that I've processed ahead of time as I said I processed this on my door with an enveloper with a transient shaper so it is shorter already so because I love I love short drums percussive drums short will make your beat a little bit more percussive and that's what we're aiming for here today right so I'm As you can hear, you hear the tuk 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 tuk. This is what you're hearing on this loop, right? I'm going to take out the kick so you can hear it. Tuk 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 tuk, and I'm going to add something to it. Tuk 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 Taking this out of record mode, kick in. I've got my mutes for the RK008 neatly programmed right here. I even got rec record here, so if I'm hitting this, it's going to go in record mode, which is probably not something you could see easily on the camera, but believe me, then now it's off. And uh, all that magic was done by Grit courtesy of Retro Kids, he's making these machines. When he came to the studio, he helped me out um, shape and fine tune this setup that you see right here. So I got some nice MIDI mutes and um, arpeggiation kind of stuff, arpeggiation kind of stuff already lined up here. So I can do a lot with this MIDI mapping stuff away. Now, that high is sitting here. So now instantly I'm getting a bit of a... For all you noobs out there that are thinking, hey, that's cool, can you not record this uh, uh, MIDI information? Usually you can, uh, probably if you got a, a <coughs> uh, 909, then probably that would work. Um, this is an old school TR-909, so there is no automation or recording of this, but it's a live set, hence it being live. 
Now, if you want to uh, get a little bit more uh, things going into this groove, this is a very, very toned down loop, mind you. So um, this will work a little bit better if you've got like loops that are not completely filled out throughout the whole bar, but do certain things. Now, the, what you're trying to look for here is a frequency window in which you can set different sounds in on different levels. I mean, you can clearly hear this um, uh, uh, 909 close, which is a bit on the loud side, I would say, so I would probably tone it down a little bit. I'm going to the mixer here. I'm not EQing anything, by the way. I'm trying to look for sounds that instantly will do the trick, right? Now, I still got space on this, uh, on this track, so... Yep. Bum, bum, bum. Cool, yeah, I'm digging this. I am so not thinking on what I'm playing, I'm jamming, you know, I need to jam stuff out. Now, groove in my uh, simple brain consists of um, beats, but it also consists, uh, groove consists also, uh, beats also consists of bass elements, which is what I'm going to use later on. Now, what else have I got? I got this defam sitting right here, on which I'm going to create some sort of a for where this little light is because it is an eight step sequencer. This would be the last one and I'm triggering it from the rim shot here so you can hear it. Rim shot, right? And now if I'm lowering the rim shot volume and opening up the DFAM, it is getting that trigger signal so it moves. This being the last step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, and I'm starting ahead of the groove, so um, um, dum, bam. I'll record it in, and you'll see it. I'll stick this on five, by the way, on track five. Record it in. Now you've got these different sparse out grooves. Mind you, if you want to get a little bit of a, uh, a bumpy, jumpy, jagging, you know, just like bump your head kind of groove, don't start on the first beat. One, two, three, four. There's like, ah, and ah, two, ah. I'm, I'm working on the after beats. Now, the DFM now is not in a melodic mode. Pretty much using noise right now, just to get a little bit of a of a groove going, because I want to add different sounds or different frequencies to my 909 drum computer, on which I'm not using a lot, by the way. This is close hi and open hi hat, and then there's only the DFM here, so I'm going to shorten that envelope. Nice, I'm liking it. If I'm thinking at the loop, you'll hear what I've just concocted here. Just a funny, sort of like crazy techno groove. Now, one thing you've noted, if you paid attention, is that this close hat, for some reason, is a lot softer than the open hat. So on the 909, and they all vary, they all do different things. So what I would do to have my uh, close that stand out a little bit more is open up the decay a little bit so now you hear the heights uh, both of them let's take out the defam so you can pay attention to this 
So now listen to how short this close head is as opposed to the open head. So you want to get them a little bit closer together so that it doesn't feel like everybody knows that what you've been doing. This needs to be a little bit more of a CIA kind of process. The better you do your job, the less people are going to find out about it, right? But to get your bearings, you need to have something to latch onto. So it's going to be that loop that I've got right here. Now, if I could shorten this high a little more, I would, but I can't. So this is probably where we need to go. We need to go with this. So I'm going to just like add a little bit more in, in terms of what I'm going to do with this close head here. And usually, old school techno, old school house, you'll just probably go for, um, you know, straight uh, hats, chat, 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 but I'm really focusing on this modern, sort of like shaker style hat that's coming from the black box and playing this as a percussion in element right here. Now, what I'm going to do, um, if you watched last week's video, I'm going to add some call and response. And the call and response now is going to be uh, a jam between the Minitar on one side and the uh, Tom here. So call and response, if you missed that video, go check it out. If not, you don't want to go check it out and you're way into the vibe right now. Cool. Um, what I would probably uh, do is on the one and two of the bar, I'll play the Tom. And on the three and the four of the bar, uh, I'll play the Minitar. So we'll See how that works out. Got a D-frame here, which is a bit on the loud side. I'll turn it down. Okay, now I'm gonna find my tom. Go to a different track. There's already call and response here because the 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 open hat is leaning as a um, a bit of an accent towards the end of the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Towards the end of the bar. If you want to do it the, in, in the first half of the bar, you'll go like. This might change, by the way. Let's see. If, well, I'm going to stray from the path. And see. Instantly, I play something on the first of the bars. You can hear one, one, and I'm going to see if I can move away from that first note, as I said. So instead of this, I'll play it like and cool. Now I'm going to go to my tom. try to play a lot of stuff and I probably shouldn't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simple simplify everything that I'm doing here boom now what happens is that this tom that you hear right now feels like it is part of the bass line Now it's gone. I've already tuned it, by the way. So it's nice. Now, why is this also an intricate part of your groove? Because this percussive uh, tom has a different transient. Listen, if, even if I shorten it. Now I'm going to look at sound design on this bass. I also want to get it snappy, so what I'm going to do is get a little bit of envelope generation on there. Lower the filter. Cool. Ooh, now we're going. Yeah. Take out the loop. See, you instantly miss it. 
second. So everything that was embedded on this loop, I set the loop, I listen to where different things are and I build stuff around it. Now this is a, a matter of working it, uh, working the, 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 the length, working the, the levels, you know, because I think the high can be a little bit softer maybe, but I think it's, I think it's cool. Now it's groovy, right? Now this is how you can really enhance your groove because if you'll do it with a different um, beat, for instance, it'll work differently, right? So let's take out this loop. Lower whatever we have. Also this uh, bass line. And let's do a different loop. Mm. Okay, this might work. As you can hear. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Let's see what happens if I play my... Ooh, that works also. Because there is something embedded on this loop, as you can hear. They got this hat with a little bit of reverb. No reverb. Reverb comes here. Uh, and then it's gone. So all in, in terms of a longer uh, sequence, they've already done something there. Okay, let me stop this. Let me stop this. Let me arm this and start from the get-go so we know where we have where we are. One, two, three. Why did you not start? Because it didn't arm you. I'm gonna arm you right now. Like. Ah, nice. Like that. Okay, here we go. But the trick is also to look at your levels. Like for instance, this kick. nitpicky you can hear that the bass drum is half a tone half a note up from the rest of the drums I understand but you know what back in the days I used to really like uh, bend myself over backwards to just make that stuff work now I'm just like you know whatever because the kick drum um, sometimes the tonality of things you know if it's a kick drum it's always it's gonna kick you in the butt anyway right so defam You can hear. So now different things start to occur. We're trying to focus on. Ooh. Kick out two, three, four. Effect. Base line. you focus on different elements that you want to really exaggerate. Now this is one top loop, mind you, I'm taking it out. It just misses something, right? So this is why I use top loops in order for me to get my groove going, but you need to build on, you know? Because if I'm playing this, one, two, three, four, five, six, both of them in. And if you just level this stuff well, you mix this well in the club, people are going like, oh, what the hell's happening? And it is because certain things need to be emphasized and other things do not need to be emphasized, right? So what I'm emphasizing right now is this defam here. Ticket kept. I'm gonna use a right symbol as well. Something that we can uh, record. Cool. A little bit on the loud side. 
side, so I'm gonna turn it out. Instantly, because this frequency is now on top of the groove that I have. I'm liking this. This is this is working for me. What are we missing? Come on, people. What are we missing? We're missing a clap. Again, I'm trying to look for call and response here, so I'm not going to go like... Which is something that would work, obviously. But yeah, since we're making a groove, and this is chopping my beat into half, you know, uh, I just want to just place it somewhere other than on the two and the four. So what we're going to do is find a spot and have it work in such a way. You are very loud. don't have to pitch everything in the same uh, key, but it, for some reason, falls a little bit better into the groove if you do. So for now, I just tuned the right symbol also to the key of the track, which I don't even know wh what it is, but anyway, um, yeah, and then I will go to find my clap and see that the clap is going to go on this Tom track, that's track number three, and let's find some call and response stuff. We got like one, two, three, uh, da -dum -ba -dum -bum. Okay, then cut them pump 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 This is how I like to work this uh, thing. Let's look at the bass for a second. The short uh, envelope with the envelope generation gives a little bit of a wow, 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 wow sound, as you can hear. Let's turn off everything off. That's funny. So if it's in record mode, you can use the mute, but the last part that you have recorded will not mute. This is something that I just found out. That's cool. So I can have something playing solo. If you're using multiple sounds on a track, hmm, I need to check that out with grid, if that was correct. That's something that I just found out. Okay, so listen to this sound. Taking out the top loop. You hear there's a bit of a nyow 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 kind of sound, for some, <laughs> lack of a better uh, example. That's envelope generation for you. So if I open it up, the note will get longer. If I'm shorting it, you hear. Call and response, right? Don't, 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 put them. Question, answer. Question, answer. Very important if you want to make infinite grooves. Okay, what do we need? Kick drum, as we go like. Clap is loud as hell, so I'm going to turn that down. And unfortunately, the envelope is something that is set with the 909 drum computer, because obviously I would like to shorten this clap, but yo, I'm not going to bug on the TR-99 drum computer, the holiest of holy machines. This, waiting at the pearly gates, if you were to perish in some unfortunate accident when well, synthesized drop on your head, this will be waiting for you. So I'm not going to go like, ah, oh, I wish. I had a shorter envelope, but you know, blasphemous me, it could be a shorter clap. But in the end of the day, you, know, you, just, you just have to level it a little bit better than so, you know? Do this fully, turn it down. Uh, now it's a bit weak, I think. A little bit. Cool. That's. Nope. And I've got a bit of a soca. Uh, rhythm going, which is what I think that if you want to make groove techno or uh, something melodic, yeah, that will work, you know? Um, so this is my sort of like, um, 
idea of where I go to. Yeah, I'm liking that. So yeah, cool. And now the loop is going to gel everything together like. And then that other loop was also, will also fit. So now I've got two loops. Whoa. I can now have stuff underneath move. Very important why this works is because I made sure that those top loops got the same sort of like frequency content happening. So then you know that that is how that works. Any questions, leave them in the comment section below. This is me talking about how to enhance your grooves, your beats. Have fun guys, and let me know how you get on, right? Well, I guess that that's the way I do it. Let me know in the comment section how you do it. And I'd like to say thank you to, uh, oh, there's a lot. Let me just get my uh, list. Um, the patrons for this week, Brent Meinema, AKA 45 kilohertz. I've got Andre Kiss, I've got DGT, Digital, FH Stutterheim, Guido Grolke, Bill Alt T Vision, and uh, ATL TV vision is that it uh, and Spencer Goodwine as patrons and they'll follow everything on patreon.com slash analog kitchen now um I'm very proud of my community I'm very proud of the way the channel is growing I'm very proud of you guys being here you love you love the content you seem to like it a lot so thanks for supporting if, if this is your first time here thank you for watching do check out what else is there there's a few things that we're doing we have video chats, uh, mainly after the video premiere, which was funny last week, wasn't it? Discord just cut out. I mean, a whole lot of servers just disappeared. <laughs> we were in the middle of not me, I think. Um, Doming, Christian Domingos, he is one of my patrons. He was in the middle of uh, uh, explaining something and all of a sudden Discord said, no, so it just broke down. That's the first time ever. But weekly after the video premiere on a Friday night, uh, we have these video chats and we'll talk since. We'll talk stuff, we'll talk. Uh, philosophies on what works and what doesn't work, which boxes to get, what to do, what not to do. There's so many things um, that come into the equation if you're working with dollars um, equipment. So uh, it's always cool to have like this, you know, uh, community uh, that you can fall back on. You can throw your demos out there. It's just like you can show your studio, show off what you have, uh, um, talk about gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and what is it that you want to buy? Do you need it? It's uh, almost Christmas so and in that sense I think um, Brian um, Rogers one of the patrons came up with um, a, a challenge that he wanted us to to do we did a um, dance carousel a while ago and that was absolutely amazing literally the rules were you get a snippet of someone else, you'll work your music on top of that, you'll play your music with the snippet of somebody else that pass whatever you made without that snippet to another producer. And then that thing went around the world twice. It's cool, because I added everything together. It was an eight bar loop, eight bars, not longer. So it was ridiculous. So it went from Germany with Master D, then it went to Holland with, um, with, um, um, uh, Robin, Robin went there, and then it just it just like went all over the world. It went to Australia, it went to America, it went to Canada. It's cool. So let's see if we can do that again, shall we? The rules are simple. You get an eight-bar loop of a producer. Yeah, we'll just you have to just come into the Discord. We'll sort it out there. Um, you know what? Let's see if this metabolizes to you guys. And next week. Yeah, which is going to be the last one for the end of the year. Um, let's see if we can just like make this into a global thing, right? And get everyone on board. Yeah, it's very, very cool. And if you added everything together, you just see that track just evolve from <laughs> different styles. Uh, I'll set a BPM, I'll probably set a chord, or, uh, and we'll just go from there, if that's something that you like. Now, on the mixer front, we are getting to a point where the channel section is done. I think Ferry said he was not too happy with the way it sounded he said he could enhance certain things so he's in in, in enhancing different things so we're looking at at um, um how we can enhance the sound on one of the on the channel strip uh, mixer you said yes uh, if you don't know about it i'm in the process of developing my own mixer um which means a mixer for dollars people you know i'm in the process of seeing if we can get a multi-clock embedded on the mixer so you don't have to daisy chain everything together it might be cool if the mixer is the hub that you just have good clear sound kick-ass sound a lot of headroom um 
maybe uh, the option to get like dual concentric two frequency bands that you can blend together for your boxes or uh, get a three band classic DJ EQ if you want to uh, just uh, do something with vinyl um, yeah that and see if we can get um, a multi-clock on there so you just like press the channel and it will start firing up your gear so you don't have to um, really think about on, on, on how to daisy chase certain things because that's also a problem if you know how to connect stuff you try to connect an octatrack to an MPC or you want to get more things to an MPC are you going to USB MIDI do you want to daisy chain it by 5 bin, five pin DIN MIDI the, ha, might be cool if the mixer can sort it out just so it sends MIDI out to your stars and then that's it alright so we're toying with that idea if you want to just know more about it hop on board patreon.com slash location now if you're still listening to me yapping oh my god thank you for being here you sir or ma'am are an absolute superstar i love you thank you for watching keep watching this space any suggestions just leave them in the comment section below thank you for being here thank you for supporting the vibe i'm in a location and i guess that that's that for today's broadcast catch you next week on another video peace <laughs>